A full hands-on video of the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip emerged on Twitter, and it looks really good. New leaks of the Galaxy S20 lineup show us some upcoming camera tricks. And speaking of cameras, it looks like the Sony Xperia 1.1 is ready to make a leap in that department as well. I'm Jaime Rivera, and proof of the fact that it's Monday in New York is, uh, well, I drove for 40 minutes just to try to find parking to get to the office. This is Parking Out Daily. The official news today begin, as always, with deals, particularly with Android products. We have some options on Amazon, like for example, the LG G8 ThinQ, which is still available for $500 for the 128 gigabyte variant, which is a pretty solid discount considering its original price. The Google Pixel 3a is still $70 off, leaving it for $330 for the 64 gig variant. And finally, the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus is $20 off, leaving it at $800 for the 128 gig variant. Obviously, we're expecting the new Galaxy very soon, so it makes sense for deals to come. Now let's move the spotlight over to, well, chips and what to expect for the future of gaming phones, particularly by MediaTek. The company has just announced their new Helio G70 and G80 chips aiming to bring superior gaming experiences to mid-range smartphones. Both use a 12 nanometer technology and are octa-core chips with two ARM Cortex-A75 CPUs that operate at two gigahertz. They also bring six Cortex-A55 CPUs that operate at 1.8 gigahertz. The company didn't disclose any production or rollout plans, but uh, we do see this being included in future smartphones was probably after MWC. Now let's talk about Huawei, particularly because uh, even with uh, the whole ban and everything, their laptops continue to be the ones praised the most, particularly over the last couple of years. Uh, and well, they're still running Windows, which is, you know, that's rather interesting. The thing about it is the company has just announced upgrades to their popular D14 and D15 laptops. Now the interesting twist, these two new models come with the 12 nanometer AMD Ryzen 3500U mobile processor and a Radeon Vega 8 graphics. They both pack eight gigabytes of dual channel RAM and the D14 brings 512 gigs on the SSD, while the D15 brings 256 gigabytes. They will be available available on select retailers by February 21st. The D14 starting at 649 pounds for the 512 gigabyte variant, and the D15 for 599.99 for the 256 gigabyte model. You can learn more in the description. I actually want to review them. The MateBook X Pro continues to be one of my favorite laptops. Obviously, this is in the lower tier of that spectrum. Now, one of the questions we've always asked ourselves is if Sony builds pretty much most of the camera sensors of the best smartphone cameras out there, why do Sony phones suck in photography? But apparently that's gonna get fixed. We've got some more leaks of the now dubbed Sony Xperia 1.1, uh, which we're expecting at MWC. We've already seen video renders of the design, but now we get details on the cameras. It will apparently bring a 12 megapixel main sensor, a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, a 64 megapixel sensor, which we don't have more details on, and apparently a two megapixel time of flight sensor and the periscopic lens with OIS. Phone is also expected to bring the Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 in addition to a tall display. Uh, yeah, I mean, the specs have always been there in the case of Sony phones. Uh, it's just the implementation is what we don't understand. And since we're talking photography, let's talk about the Samsung Galaxy S20 lineup as uh, one of the major rumors is that we will be getting some interesting changes in photography. And now let's be serious, it seems like the S20 is competing with the Pixel for the most amount of leaks. We've got a new one that claims that the S20's cameras will be able to take simultaneous pictures with two or three lenses at a time. After it takes the picture, apparently it will let you choose the picture you prefer. The feature will be called a uh, quick take apparently. Now we don't have any specifics as to whether this is going to work uh, all the time or if you've got other options or what's coming. Regardless, uh, it would be really interesting to see the company pull it off. I mean, to a certain degree, the iPhone 11 Pro does it, sort of, not really, well, yeah, we'll see. And finally, the hottest news today I have to do once again with Samsung and what to expect with the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip. If you were on Twitter over the weekend, you most probably saw a video that most of us saw. It pretty much shows us the phone looking closed and extended. On the outside, we get to see the minimal secondary display and the rear dual cameras. On the side, we see the extended display and the 22 by nine aspect ratio that actually looks very tall. The video shows the display on, but we only get to see the settings display. 
we'll obviously get to see more, but let us know in the comments down below. I'm really curious, do you like this design or not? Because in my case, I look at this and I look at the Razer and I want the Moto Razer, but that's just me. Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram and follow me on my personal handles to see me playing around with whatever phone I'm using. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.